Good morning, my name is Dan Bozarth and welcome to The Starting Line. It's also Labor Day. Our guest today is Dr. Dina Stacer. Uh, she is a real estate agent, she owns a real estate firm, and she is an entrepreneur. We're going to have a great conversation with her. So, uh, good morning, Dina. How are you? Good morning, Dan. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Good. <coughs> it's uh, it's nice to see you here on this on this great Labor Day, right? Thank you so. for inviting me too. Well, I'm glad that you're here. It's yeah. it's cool. So, I try to break the ice a little bit, and I ask a question that I try to ask the same question each time to each one of my guests. And I'm a I'm a collector of quotes. I'm a lover of quotes. So my question is, what is your favorite quote, and why? Well, I have a lot of favorite quotes, but one of my ones that I'm using right now regularly is, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say it right, but it's <laughs> Albert Einstein's quote about the thinking that got you into this mess is not the thinking you need to have to get out of it. It's one of my favorite quotes. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. that, that's poignant. So I like that. So tell us a little bit about. Um, so I want to know. We want to know more about. Dina Stacer. So we want to tell you know, tell us a little bit about you as it's as you related to real estate and uh, uh, your conflict resolution. Any of the any of the things that you're an entrepreneur in, you probably run more businesses than I even imagine. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about uh, so your um, professional life. <laughs> I think my first experience with entrepreneurial ship was my grandpa in the 50s. I was very little, but he was a real estate agent, but he was a farmer, he had a chicken ranch. My grandmother actually made angel food cakes with eggs and sold them along Beach Boulevard close to Knott's Berry Farm. So I saw my grandma and grandpa in action, did not understand what entrepreneurship was, but I, will, I loved watching my grandpa. He had like one of those old houses with the extra patio in it you know, the oh, time yeah. it's built on, and that's where his office was. And today, I have one of his pencils. It was West Realty, because that was his last name, my last name. And then he also, I also have his listing book that looks like a checkbook. Wow. So when they were cleaning out my grandma's stuff, my cousin said, you should probably take this. Yeah, that's cool. So that was my first probably experience, even though I never thought about it that way. <laughs> and then I think my next experience being an entrepreneur is selling Girl Scout cookies because <laughs> I was okay. in competition. Yeah. I wanted to see if I could sell the most. And I did. Awesome. Not like today. And I didn't have social media. I had to actually go knock on doors and see if my mom could take some to work. So, right. but those were my probably my first two experiences. Yeah. I think knocking on door causes teaches good lessons. Yeah, it's also really scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so that's that's kind of how I got started. And then the other piece is that what I do is that I have been an educator since the '70s. I have my teaching credential. I went to college and I got my degree in child development, family development. I got my teaching credential. I went and taught for a while and I hated being in the classroom. Not oh, really? because I didn't like teaching. I love teaching. I hated being trapped because I wasn't making enough difference in people's lives. Oh. Okay. So I was like, I got to get out of here. I got to figure out what to do. And then I understood what entrepreneurial was. I can work my own hours. Sure. So I love I loved the fact that I could go into real estate and then I also started teaching parenting classes and to this day I still did I started teaching parenting classes in the in the 80s and I still teach parenting class for the courts for parents fighting over custody of their children high level stuff and um and then I got my license in the 70s with real estate so I've continued to do both and um I found that that ability to help people solve really high level conflict problems actually translates into being able to help people who are in real estate that are only crazy till the escrow closes. So that's yeah, you know, I, bottom line. <laughs> yeah, I get that. What, <laughs> so. what attracted you to psychology and how, I mean, you have, you have a doctorate in psychology. That's more schooling than I care to even fathom. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's really true because you're a learner all the time. I know that. But um, you asked me 
um, to think about some of the questions, and one of them was, "What do I want to be when I grow up?" Yeah. And when I when I was little, and I wanted to be a fashion designer and a ballet dancer. But okay. really what I wanted to do is be a psychologist when I got a little older. So I love the fact that everything is about psychology. Like real yeah. estate is all about psychology. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've always been an advocate of learning um, how people tick, what they need to know, um, why they did what they did. And so that helps me figure out how to predict their behavior. So I, I've gone off and I've learned, I've been participant of all, you know, like a, a mental toughness pros. I participated mm -hmm. in a program there, got certified in that one, did another one on personality styles. Everything I've ever done in psychology relates to how I help people get through real estate and the conflict, okay. everything. That's awesome. Yeah. That's all, you know, when I think of psychology, I think of a cartoon. I think of Lucy, Pan, uh, Lucy Van Pence, one of the Peanuts character with the little booth <laughs> five says psychology five cents right <laughs> right nickels 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 anyway yeah. so <laughs> yeah <clears throat> anyway okay so what do you think the the one thing is that you would have loved to have known uh, before you got into your career so I wished that I had been able to actually talk to my grandpa I was little mm, okay. I didn't understand that. Sure. And I remember that I got really nice, warm feelings. That, you know, a lot of people are like, why would you go into real estate? You know, whatever. You know, you got your degree and everything else. But there's something romantic about it because I saw my grandpa do it. And then my dad told me that my grandpa actually, when he, um, he had some extra land, so he sold it to people. And instead of getting his commission off of it, and instead of getting a full lump sum, he allowed people to make payments. And those payments paid for my grandma 20 years after my grandpa was gone. Oh my God. And the ability to give people you know, financial freedom. Yeah. So I would talk to my grandpa about why he did what he did. He was very entrepreneurial. I mean, he was a farmer, a chicken rancher, right? And then my grandma sure. selling, I would love to now be the adult to go back and say, tell me what it was like. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that was, that would be something I would do. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so also uh, tell me a common myth about your industry that you would like to debunk. <laughs> Real estate is easy, and anybody can be a real estate agent. Can't they? Isn't it, isn't it they can. You can get a. Sh you can hang a shingle, but that yeah. doesn't mean that you actually know what you're doing. It's really, if people do a good job, then mm -hmm. they earn every bit of the commission because you're working with the highest level of people's fiduciary, you know, finances. Sure. Their, their yeah. responsibility, and so. Um, there's so many skills that you need, right? And so somebody who hangs a shingle isn't necessarily able to know how to do how the contract works or how to read people, how to figure out how somebody knows the difference on what somebody really wants yeah. versus what they're telling you they want. And how do you negotiate uh, you know, a problem with big, ugly, I, I right yeah. now have a fixer house and there's a woman that's in the house that's part of the family. and trying to help her get yeah. rid of her stuff yeah, yeah. requires psychology and then helping the other side get what they need on time all of that requires a lot yeah. of finesse yeah a absolutely. lot of skills absolutely. and um and there's so much psychology to it so are you selling somebody's home where the family pat you know somebody family member passed away sure. you got to understand that you got to be gentle with people are you dealing sure. with six attorneys and six siblings that are fighting over a pink couch sure. and a, in the living room i've done <laughs> sure. all of that sure yeah so dina i've known you for about a decade now mm -hmm. actually probably a little over a decade now and um, so i was thinking about this question myself and 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 your answer it that uh, the myth is that it's easy so I, I know some of the stories that you've told me but you have worked with lots of real estate agents on the other side of the fence that looked like it, they thought it was easy coming in <laughs> and uh, didn't quite get it mm -hmm. so what's that like all the time uh, working with real estate agents with without those skills, with kind of thinking it's yeah. easy and just jumping into it? Um, there's been many people I've mentored 
there's been many people I just did the work and coached them and said, okay, here's what you need to do, or I've done their job to be able to get it done. Yeah. I've also relied on a certain clients to help negotiate things for me, like in your I, transaction. I'm nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, like I said, they're only crazy till the escrow closes, <laughs> including yeah. real estate agents. And, the, and their clients. <laughs> so. but, but, and that's the part that's fun, is that if you're, if you're um, working with people and they're a little whacked out because of the pressure and the decision and everything's yeah. going really fast, to be able to pace it and know that I just need to coach them and guide them, yeah. even a real estate agent, and then get them to the point yeah. where we get to the end result and we win. Yeah. And then we all celebrate and we forgot how crazy it yeah. was. Cool. So this next question, I want to take a little departure from the business uh, stuff that we've been talking about. And this is just a real curious question that I thought of. So if you could have lunch with three people, whether they're dead or alive, who would you choose and what would you talk about? Okay. Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Benjamin Franklin. Okay. Oprah Winfrey. Wow. Okay. 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 Abraham Lincoln okay. was a massive leader. He had tremendous pressure that where when he where he lived and what the times were and the decisions he had to make. And there's a great book called Lincoln on Leadership that's just amazing. And what he did was he went down and lived in the camp during the war, so he could get mm -hmm. to what was okay. going on. Yeah. I want to talk to him about that because that's really where the difference of being a real estate agent helping people with conflict is that you got to have experience it so you can guide them and help them through it. So that's one. Um, two, Benjamin Franklin was he was um, actually irascible and very difficult in the very beginning. He was also a millionaire by the time he was 42 and he left money to Boston and he left money to Philadelphia with the rule that they had to keep it in a, an account for a hundred years only to give be given to people that were business people entrepreneurs right and then the next hundred years that they had to be able to do another thing so he was way forward thinking he worked on virtues he worked on commitment he was very focused on self-development so that's the second one and then the third one Oprah one of the most influential women in the world. And what she did was she absolutely took the talk show and turned it into warm, comfortable, vulnerable, and helped people really understand what it's like to be her and allowed other people to check in, which is where we've got the virtual shows today that might go a little too far. But she's, you know, she's still alive and kicking and I would just love to pick her brain. It wouldn't just be lunch though. <laughs> Lunch, dinner, breakfast. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Just, I mean, all these amazing people. A couple of people. days, yeah. 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 That's awesome. I like all three of those. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll make them on my list. <laughs> so, um, something else that I know that you have done. So, um, my sons, both of my sons are Eagle Scouts. It's the highest ranking honor that a Boy Scout can get. Uh, and in today's world, uh, girls are invited to Boy Scouting now, too. So mm -hmm. there are girls that can be Eagle Scouts. Well, the highest award that a Girl Scout can get, and it's equal to an Eagle uh, Scout award, is called the Gold Award. Now, I know you're a recipient of that, of that award. Yeah. So how did that experience and that award affect you? Um, <clears throat> girl Scouting was amazing me it changed my life wow yeah so um who i am today is because of that um all the challenges all the things i had to do i had to put together an entire event by myself i had to create a badge and design it and get it printed that we all got at the event i had to contact people and reserve a room i'm 17 Right, I'm doing stuff. I'm I'm organizing people to come in and dis display dancers, a museum, food, a flyer, an advertisement. So that's just one of the pieces I had to complete for that. But I started in brownies. Every piece of information I learned, it was about integrity. It was about learning to leave a place cleaner than you found it. It was learning about you know serving other people. Everything about that made me it doesn't mean i didn't get it in my family 
but it was about practicing it and putting it to use. So I loved Girl Scouts, loved it because of what it did for me. That's awesome. You know, I'm a big fan of Boy Scouts. I'm still in Boy Scouts. Uh, I train the trainers, I guess. I I'm train so adults. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can always join and help me. I can. Well, now anyway. I would have been a Boy Scout. I would have gotten the Eagle Award because <laughs> I'm a little competitive. Yeah. You know, now because girls are, you know, they're not restricted from being a Girl Scout. So there's girls yeah. that can get the Gold Award and the Eagle Scout well, Award. So it might not be too cool. late for me. <laughs> well, yeah, it's before you're 18. <laughs> I know, I know you're one. only barely 18. But. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so, um, so the next thing I want to ask you is about dreams, about the future. So um, what is a dream that you have? And tell us how you would go about achieving it. Okay, you ready for this? I'm ready. You probably I'm know this on. already. I, probably I want to own the town of Julian. And I want to turn it into the West Coast Williamsburg. I think that's incredible. And how would I do yeah. that? Well, I don't know if I have to own the town, but it's, you know, the town has struggled, but it's got history. And we don't have anything in California, in our area, that has a, a, a deep ability to go do, um, bring people in and teach about history or invite people to go to a wine tasting and take them mm -hmm. down the hill in a bus so they're safe. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff. So I thought about all sorts of ways to get the community involved and really preserve history forever and ever, and then get school kids to be a part of it, get adults to be a part of it, and get people who are really in love with preserving that place. And um, I, I did finally go to Williamsburg once, and then I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Museum, research, you name it. And it's the center for all the New England stuff. Well, we yeah. don't have that here. Oh, it's, oh, it's incredible. I've so. I've been to Colonial Williamsburg. You know, it is a, a, a township, right? The, uh, the, the, the tourism part is a... Uh, it's a company that uses the town as Colonial Williamsburg is an organization and not a place, but they use the whole town and there's there's different parts that they own. So I could see the same yeah. thing with you. You know, all you could do is buy a gold mine or two. Well, uh, there, was one, there was one on sale not too long ago when we had fires. It was a fire yeah. sale. Fire sale. Julian. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. I think one of them is actually shut down right now. It's probably still for sale. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that coming true. But wouldn't it be fun? And then I also, so you asked yeah. about dreams. I had this vision of also doing a video in Julian where you have the um, men that are coming out of, you know, their pickaxe and their uh, sure. things coming from the grave. The oh, and they're the skulking grave. down with oh, their, okay. to the bar to talk about the good old days. And uh, <laughs> when Pirates of the Caribbean came out, I'm like, oh, we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's it. That's that would be. That's interesting. You ask how I would do it, so there yeah. would be sort of social media. That's, to drop I'm traffic. buying a ticket. I'm there ready. you go. I'll sit there with a ticket. Yeah. I'm ready. Um, so there's something that we do here. This is a. This is another question. See, I, I, some of my questions they go all over the place, but um, so when we make a mistake here, we always strive to make a heroic save. So to us, a heroic save is if we've really dropped the ball. How do we create a heroic save? to save that customer, to save that situation, to do our best to to serve the customer over and above, especially from a mistake. So tell us about a heroic save that that, uh, that you did and how that came out. Well, this is a little bit of a long story, so let me shorten it as much as I can. I have a senior couple that want to buy a home up in Sun City, way far away from me, right? Okay, sure. And they're trying to sell their cabin. Last year I met them. They got snowed in for 20 days. They're in their 80s. We got to get them off the hill. The real estate agent that's selling their cabin didn't really get things in writing in a great way. So we didn't know if we could write an offer. And I realized that about 5 o'clock in the evening every night they kind of forget what they're supposed to do because they're having a little sundowners. Oh. So I spent two hours typing up in a, in a total list of here's what you need to do first this is what you need to do second and then i walk through their options of purchasing the property my goal was to get them to realize they could buy it for cash and not have a 700 dollars a month payment and also a rent payment of 700 dollars for seniors and i 
did all sorts of research. I did all sorts of stuff about financial stuff. And yesterday, I walked him through the entire thing. They agreed. I got the offer signed. We opened escrow today. Oh, this is like heroic save, like good. right now. This mm-hmm. just happened. Yep. That's amazing. That's yep. very cool. I'm high. <laughs> That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so we got about 10 minutes left. I got three questions left. Okay, we'll hurry. So we'll, now, oh, yeah. <laughs> one, this next one's, this next one's kind of long, but we'll see. So people think starting your own business um, is difficult and may end up in failure. So if you're trying to help someone be successful, what advice do you give them about being successful in creating their own dream, their own business? Well, you gotta start with what is your dream clear? And then you gotta figure out what's it going to take and who can help you, you can't do it on your own. So you have to surround yourself with a group of people that not only support you, but can can coach you and guide you. They can't just say that a boy. They need to be able to help you with what you're going to do. And you also, with your clarity, have to say, am I willing to sacrifice and do whatever it takes? Do I have the focus, the drive? A lot of people would rather have the security of a paycheck and mm-hmm. the fact that they're, they, you know, they know they go to work every day. And that, of course, changes as the economy changes and the world shuts down. But to be an entrepreneur requires a tremendous amount of drive and focus. And um, I would suggest people do a lot of research first, do interviews, investigation, figure out if what they're doing is possible, research online. There's lots of programs to help people do that. And then when they're ready, they have to realize that they just dramatically change their life and maybe start part-time without giving up your income. Those are some of my awesome. suggestions. Awesome, that's very sound advice. So the next one is, I'm gonna turn this around on you a little bit. So if you were in my shoes, what was what is one question that you would have asked that I didn't? What drives you? What drives you? So Dina, <laughs> what drives you? <laughs> You know I was going to ask it as soon as you figured it out. (laughs) Um, You know, there's a couple things. I believe that I'm supposed to make a big, 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 huge dent in the universe, a ripple that just keeps going, right? A sound wave that just keeps going. And so what drives me is I haven't gotten there yet. And I'm willing to stay up all night long if I need to, to get it done. And, um, and hold on to that even when it's discouraging. So I have some kind of a, you know, I don't know, it's like this time timer that it's going tick, 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 and I'm like, race, hurry up. And, um, and, and also always learning and trying something new is so exhilarating. <gasps> I haven't learned that yet, let's go figure it out. So those two go together that drive me, That's making awesome. a difference, yeah. That's awesome. All right, so the last question, like you said earlier, the most important question. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Accurate Security Pro's starting line, right? So security is, is, is our deal, right? But security means so many different things to so many different people. So what does security truly mean to, to Dr. Dina Stacer? Well, you know, the idea of being safe, right? Mm -hmm. So I've told you I'm up late, and a lot of times I'm at my office late, and my husband can go on the camera and make sure I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So that's (laughs) peace of mind for him. I'm like, I'm fine. But I'm by myself. I mean, I, I left the building the other night at midnight, and I'm the only one in the entire complex, and there's five buildings, right? And I'm like totally fine, but I know I'm safe. I love the idea that I can drive home and unlock my front door before I walk in the door. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that I can unlock the door from my couch or lock it and turn the air conditioner on while I'm driving home. That's all security because I don't have to worry about getting up or going and doing something and getting distracted when I'm on a roll because I can just use my phone. And I love the fact that two weekends ago, we got an entire carpet redone in our office and we watched it on camera. 
who saw cool. they were working. Yeah. So the idea of being able to always have a sense that I don't, I have confidence that I can keep doing what I'm supposed to do and never worry about being frightened or disrupted or scared or in an unsafe place. So it's all of that. That's what it means to me. That's great. That's great. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you being here for this interview. And uh, I got to learn some stuff about you. And I, that's. Uh, I got emotional. It's really <laughs> impressive. I know. <laughs> I know. See, I, I didn't the tap the table this time. <laughs> she did. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway, so that's it for today's, uh, today's starting line. Uh, happy Labor Day. And join us next month for another great podcast. Have a great and accurate day.